Hi, YouTubers. Dave Soriano, University of Pittsburgh's Bradford campus in Pennsylvania. And uh, my area of research is novel paint formulations. Uh, here I am doing a approximately 100 times magnification using the Geozone uh, digital microscope. I've uploaded a product review. It's about $20 US, US dollars, uh, $20 on Amazon.com plus shipping and uh, very good value in my opinion. Well, anyway, what I'm about to show you here uh, will involve some of the paint formulations I'm preparing. Um, let's go to full screen. I can edit this later. And there we are. Now, uh, what we're seeing here is a foundation of cardstock, about 140 pound, uh, Georgia Pacific, that I use for swatches. And uh, I have an emulsifying petrolatum, and uh, I believe I have uploaded a YouTube video on the formulation. I'll check. If not, I'll have one up in the next day or two. And uh, we're in about mid-September or so, 2019. And uh, with that emulsifying petrolatum, where I use renewables, I emulsify uh, acrylic paints. Now, in this case, I am utilizing uh, some... Uh, tempera poster paint, very uh, poster paint, a, a large market uh, directed at children. And I've taken the tempera or uh, a powder. Uh, Jack uh, Richardson is the brand and uh, formulated it up and uh, prepared the emulsifying uh, paint. Let's see if we take a look at it. I have some here, I'll show it to you what it looks like. Let's see if you can, well, we'll get to it in a minute. And uh, uh, after uh, mixing it well, I applied it to the cardstock. There is no uh, gesso undercoat. And uh, I let it dry, it takes about 30 minutes and uh, it becomes dry to the touch. And uh, here's the key, the, Tempera poster paint, the powder, red powder pigment, is mixed with Sealcrete, S-E-A-L-K-R-E-T-E, -E -E. Sealcrete, and uh, I think it's a product put out by Rust-Oleum. I pay $15 a gallon through Walmart. I pick it up at the store. And a gallon of that can go an awful long way for artists. And it starts out milky white and it's uh, a polyacrylic aqueous emulsion and it dries clear. And I'm using that as my vehicle, mix it up with the tempera paint and the emulsifying petrolatum you get a beautiful homogeneous it flows off the brush very nicely in this case i'm using a flat brush i let it dry and then i put a thin coat of aquazole a q u a z o l aquazole and that material can be obtained from polymer chemistry. Now I have it from uh, Aldrich, Sigma Aldrich, a chemical supplier, because you know I am a chemistry professor and that's where we get our chemicals for the most part. But uh, Polymer Chemistry, Innovations Incorporated, uh, I believe they're in Tucson, Arizona. They were kind enough to uh, grant me uh, various molar mass, molecular weight sizes and I took a saturated solution of Aquazole 500, and uh, technically it's poly-2-ethyl-2-oxazoline, and there's a chemistry professor at the University of Pisa in Italy who is actually using this water-based uh, varnish 
to uh, work on some aspects of uh, art conservation with a work by a master in Italy. And uh, I've been investigating the material. And what I do is apply a saturated solution. If you heat it up above 70 degrees Celsius, it becomes less soluble. So the, the trick is to uh, stir it at room temperature. And I let it go overnight on a shaker. And I apply that with brush and I allow that to dry. It doesn't take long, along the lines of 30 minutes or so at uh, 20 degrees Celsius. And then uh, top coat with oil pastels. And I use Kraypos, the Japanese venerable uh, oil pastels, and Pentel as well, a competing brand. And I have found that it will overlay very nicely. Now you can't rework the acrylic, of course, it's gonna be dried. But that Aquazole uh, provides a very nice uh, degree of reflectance. And I found that the uh, oil pastels can be applied very nicely uh, over that. So here you're seeing low magnification, uh, maybe a hundred it is, huh? And uh, the, uh, we'll just scan the surface. I've used red, orange, and yellow. And uh, of course that can be worked in the oil pastel uh, blending by finger or uh, there's a red area by finger or uh, with paper towel over an index finger. Uh, there we are, I'm just focusing. And that will give you an idea of um, what this looks like. As I said, this microscope is uh, $20. And uh, let's show you one that's been untreated. So I'll slide this one over. And here I have not placed any of the oil pastels on the surface. And you can see the type of brush I used. I think a filbert might be better for this uh, brush. But you can see what that looks like with no undercoat. And uh, that's without any oil pastels on the surface. So that's where I'm at right now. And uh, of course, the second coat could be in order, but it's the type of brush I was using. And uh, uh, the petrolatum, of course, uh, that I'm using, the formulations can vary markedly in terms of viscosity and color. Uh, the one I'm using is um, an oil and water actual emulsion. And uh, let me bring that up if I can, give you an idea of what the petrol latum looks like. There it is. We're looking at the surface under magnification. It's opaque, uh, colorless, and some can vary. Some can be light yellow, depending on what I use. And uh, here's the paint sample. Bring that in, might be able to see uh, the actual, let me bring this up. And we're looking at the surface of the paint itself, the emulsion. And I haven't stirred it for a few minutes, but uh, that gives you an idea of the type of research I'm doing. And uh, I will upload the pertinent information. Uh, oh, I'll list it here with this video in case you wanna try your hand at this approach. And uh, I will also upload uh, some short videos on the various types of renewable emulsifying petrolatum formulations that we use. And it really um, it provides a different effect. You can do impasto. Uh, I also will sometimes include various kaolin clays. And interestingly enough, gold bond foot powder, which contains zinc oxide, acacia, and other components, really can help with uh, even flow off the brush. Now here I've not done anything to create an impasto, but uh, that works well, uh, just very nicely. And uh, here's uh, one last one I'll show you, uh, a very thick application of a commercial uh, blue paint mixed with the petrolatum. 
This was done about an hour ago. It won't be dry to the touch until, I, I would say, uh, this is a little thicker, maybe in a couple of hours at 20 degrees Celsius. But um, this has a very, very nice, uh, definitely, it's, you could tell it's acrylic, but you know it's more than acrylic. You know, it's mixed mediums. And uh, I'll let that go for a while, I'll apply the Aquazole, uh, which is not expensive, a white solid off off white a little bit of yellow color and it depends on the molecular weight that you're using and uh then i will uh put some oil pastels over the surface of this okay thanks for watching and uh if you have any questions i'll leave my email address you know where to get a hold of me um, and uh, chemistry and art have been in a relationship for thousands of years going back to cave art in uh, France, what is now France and Spain, and even some in uh, Great Britain. Thanks for watching, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.